So we're talking about oil today. Not a bad topic, it's one that we like to touch on every now and then. This report has taken me a little bit longer to get back than I had wanted it to initially because I thought these were gonna take maybe around three months each. And uh, it's been about a six month interval in between the last oil test and this current one of getting results back, um, mainly due to me taking the BRZ to work when I was working full time, uh, the STI being down for a little bit. So we have had a small delay in this oil analysis video series, but we're back on track now. So to give you guys some backstory, if you guys are new to this little oil mini series that we're doing, because I know the channel has grown since then, I'm trying to find the best oil to run in these cars using data, not just opinion, not just, hey, I recommend using this oil. When someone asks why, they're like, I don't know, it's just the oil that I wanna use. So with that being said, I have ventured out to start testing oils. Now the first oil that we ran through the car was Castrol Edge, did phenomenal. That oil actually did phenomenal in the car. There were no issues with it, no high levels of anything coming back. And then I had a plethora of requests from people to start doing other oils. So that is what we are now doing. Now, when I changed the oil in the car, this, uh, this Motul EFE X Clean is what we put in the car. It's 5W30. Motul is rated to be one of the higher oils out there. So I'm expecting, I was expecting good results to come back with this oil. Now there's a caveat when it comes to this oil stuff that I do want to add for you guys is that every car is going to respond differently to oils that you put in it. So this is just a baseline of me using my STI as the control and the oils being the different variables that we're running through the car. So if you're looking to use some of these oils in your car, are, please keep in mind that they will respond differently to some of the oils that you are putting into it compared to what I am putting in mine. So what I'm looking for on these oil reports is the different amount of metals that come into play when it comes to reading the oil analysis report. Now in the last oil video, I went through and I broke down what every single metal can be linked to if you are seeing high traces of certain metals in your oil when it goes out to get sampled. So I'll link that, or I'm not even gonna link it, I'll copy and paste that list down below in this video also, so that way you guys have some idea of what these metals actually mean when I say these ones are elevated, these ones are decreased, just so, just so you're not left out in the blue. So let's get into it. Let's start talking about this updated Blackstone Lab Report for the Motul 8100 EFE X Clean. Is it X Clean? EFE, X Clean, EFE, you know what I mean. Let's, let's talk about oil. So before we jump into these lab reports too much, I do wanna show you guys just a visual sample of some of these oils. Now this oil here, this is brand new Motul X Clean 8100 5W30. As you can see, it's pretty clear oil. It's not terribly viscous and it just, it looks good. It's a good clean looking oil. So this is what it goes in like zero miles. When you pull it out, this is at 2,500 miles. So just to give you guys a color comparison here, there is a lot that goes into oils. Now with this used oil here, it is definitely less viscous just by looking at it. Now if you don't know all the stuff about viscosity and everything like that when it comes to oils, I will link somewhere up here in this area the link to the last oil video so that way you can get a little better understanding of what we're talking about here. But the oil, it just it breaks down. You can get fuel in the oil, coolant. There's a lot of things that can get in here to contaminate it to to just make it less viscous. When the oil gets less viscous, it's not doing as good of a job at lubricating the engine, which can lead to spun bearings, um, lo a lot more other issues down the line. Uh, if you're running too rich, you can potentially wash your cylinder walls, send fuel into your oil. That's gonna also degrade the oil relatively quickly as well. So making sure that you have good oil or the, or as other people call it, like the lifeblood of the car, just make sure you're using a good oil. That's why we're doing all these tests. That's why we're testing all these things. So let's start getting into the test report. I'll start covering with you guys kind of what we saw last time with the Castrol versus what we saw this time with the Motul 8100 X Clean. So it has been a little while since we've used the whiteboard. Don't, don't mind it being crooked. The whole garage is crooked. Don't worry about it. So before we get into the results of the Motul, I do want to cover the X Clean beforehand. So when it came to the X Clean, this is what Blackstone had to say. 
This is a great first report for your WRX. Universal averages for the EJ25 motor show expected wear levels for oil run about 3,800 miles. Your sample saw slightly less use in that and metals are all lower than average, which is a great indication that you've got a happy and healthy engine under the hood. The viscosity held up well to use, reading in a range of 5W30. No contaminants like fuel or, cool or coolant showed up to spoil things. Low insolubles showed up. These chickens, man. <laughs> Low insolubles show good oil filtration. With results this good, we think going up to 5,000 miles should be no problem. I have no idea why those chickens are so loud, but they're incredibly loud. So our first report from Blackstone came back exceptionally well. All of the metals that we had in the oil were all lower than average, which is what we want to see. Now, with this new one, that's not exactly the case. So, this next report that I'm about to read you is using the Motul 8100 X-Clean. Well, even though you didn't run this oil as long as your first sample, wear metals are a bit higher this time around. While this isn't the ideal trend, no one metal is high enough to suggest a serious problem. Maybe something temporary or situational, like harder use, extended idling, or even just more city driving caused a bit more wear. There's some fuel in the sample, but we wouldn't hold it responsible for the increased metal levels. You can get a little fuel for mm, you can get a little fuel from normal use, and it isn't generally harmful. Just check back on the wear for the oil next time. So it doesn't raise any obvious big red flags for us. However, there are some things that I wanted to point out. So some of the metals that came back higher than average were aluminum, iron, I think that's the scientific term for iron, IR. If not, that's iron. Uh, copper, wow, I really don't know any of these. I'm just gonna write copper. Uh, well, I don't, I don't even wanna try to pronounce this one, but Molly, Molly Bedun, Molly Bedun, Bedun? No idea, I'm just gonna write Molly. Titanium, I know that one, that one's just TI. Boron, calcium, Magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc. Now there's a lot more metals that go into oil analysis outside of just these, but so far we have aluminum, iron, copper, I don't know how to pronounce that one, titanium, boron, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, and zinc. Now when it comes to narrowing down what the potential issue could be when it comes to these, I highly suggest looking at that chart that I made on the last video. And like I said, I'll link that one down. Well, I'll copy and paste that one down below so that way you can take a look at it. But aluminum, since we have higher than average readings, last time we had three, I believe this is red in parts per, yeah, it is red in parts per million. So last time we had three parts per million. So actually, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna make a chart real quick. Give me one sec. All right, so I made a more realistic graph to go off of for this. So I have all of our metals over on the left, which have either increased or decreased from our last oil sample. So for the metals, we have aluminum, iron, copper, titanium, boron, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, and zinc. Now, each of these can be related to different issues when it comes to the engine, which I have listed over here for just some of the potential issues. These are just some of the ones that kind of caught my eye. Now, we have Motul here, which is our current sample, Castrol here, which is our previous one, the Delta, which is just the change between the two oils, and then uh, what the potential failure or leading failure could be for the future. So all of these are measured in parts per million. Um, you need a spectrometer to go through and be able to read oil analysis stuff. At my last job, we had a spectrometer and it was kind of cool to use, but keep in mind, these are all parts per million. So with aluminum, we did see a three parts per million increase, which could be a leading indicator of pistons and bearing failure down the road. Now, also, I want to say that all of these numbers, all of, or at least this oil sample was before the car was tuned on E85 and before it was really beat on. So all of this should be the exact same as when we did the previous sample. The only thing that changed was the oil that we used and the ambient temperature outside from going from fall to winter time. So aluminum could be a leading indicator of piston and bearing failure later down the road. Um, there are some other ones that kind of tie into that, which start me, which lead me to believe that it might be going out here in the future. But going down the list, the second one we have up here is iron. Motul came in at seven parts per million. The Castrol came in at five parts per million. 
two parts per million increase, which could lead to a sign of cylinder liners, which kind of ties back in here with piston and bear bearing failure. So the next one that we have going on the list is copper. Motul came in at nine parts per million versus the seven parts per million that we saw with Castrol. Two parts per million increase, which goes with thrust washers. Now thrust washers are on the crankshaft and also tie back in up here to those internals on the engine, potentially failing here in the future. So, I don't know, I'll have Google Translate or something to do that one. Uh, Motul came in at 10 parts per million where Castrol was at 70, so we did see a decrease, not an increase there, which, which is piston rings, but that's good. That's good, we saw a good decrease in piston ring wear right there, which I, I mean, that is golden considering we have piston bearing, cylinder liner, thrust washers all increased, so hey, at least our piston rings are doing all right. So Mojo did really good with the titanium. Uh, we went down 23 parts per million, which is generally linked to like valve springs, turbine components, that kind of thing. So it is good to see that we went down on titanium and our valves are still doing, they will, we can, we can perceive that our valves and all other titanium components in there are doing fairly well. Boron was the next one on the list. Uh, Motul came in at 16, so we did see a, why did I keep putting pluses here? We did see a decrease of 102 parts per million. Um, that, I mean, I'm not too worried about that one. It's generally linked to fuel additives or coolant leaks. Coolant leaks. So 102 down, by all means, works for me. Uh, calcium was another one that decreased. So calcium isn't a major one. Uh, these last four are more or less just oil additives. So this is where the, the differentiating factor between oils is really gonna start to come into play. So calcium was down 116, magnesium was down 593, phosphorus down 13, and zinc was down another 20. So all of these are oil additives. It doesn't mean anything bad. It just means that Motul is using different oil additives than Castrol or some of these other brands out there are. Overall, it's not a bad oil report at all. Like, just like Blackstone said, there's not one giant leading indicator saying that we could have a potential failure later down the road. But these three that came back higher than average do concern me just a little bit for aluminum, iron, and copper, which could be the piston or the bearings the cylinder liners and the thrust washers on the crank. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks, but overall, I'm I'm not I'm not, not happy with the Motul one. Um, it's just the numbers. The numbers are concerning me just a little bit, but the next oil we are gonna be running through is the standard 8100X, or the standard 8100 Eco Energy from Motul as well. But a couple of other smaller points that I wanted to talk about with this report is the viscosity. So they do measure viscosity of the oil when it goes into the lab. Like I said before, they use two orifices. They pour a set amount of oil through it. They measure the time it takes to get from one spot to the other. That's how they measure viscosity. It's generally at a controlled temperature. In our case, temperature was at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just what they, what they measure oil at. We did see increased fuel percentage in the oil as well. So from our last report, we had less than half of one parts per million, which is actually really good. This current time around, not so much. We have 1.3 parts per million, still not a huge thing. Could just mean the car is running rich. Could just mean that a little bit of gasoline or something else worked its way into the oil, so it's not a huge concern. For coolant, we have zero coolant on both reports going into the oil, which is very good. We don't want to see any uh, any head gasket failure. So if you are seeing coolant in your oil on these reports, it is a good indicator that your head gasket is probably going to go out soon. Same with water, if you have any water going in there. And then uh, insolubles, we just saw a slight increase, but overall, it's not a bad report. I only ran this oil for about 2,000 miles before I had to change it. So that's the only thing that concerns me is what if I would have ran the oil for another thousand? What would these numbers actually be at? and what would the differentiating factor look like. So if I really wanted to, I could take two thirds of each of these numbers and get a little bit more of an accurate comparison. But overall, I would still run the oil. I have no complaints with it. If it was between that and Castorol, just looking at these reports, I'd probably go back to Castorol, but that's not what we're doing here. So the, like I said, the next oil that we are running through this oil sample test is the Motul 8100 standard non-X clean 5W30. So overall, I'm, I mean, it's not the best oil report that we could have gotten, but it's also not a bad one. It doesn't show any real indication of any failures right now. But like I said, that aluminum, iron, and copper are starting to make me believe that the internals of the car might not be lasting 
terribly much longer. Now, with running ethanol on the car, I am gonna be having to change my oil more frequently. I'm probably gonna be doing it around every 1,500 miles or so, and I will send those samples out to Blackstone as well, because I am curious what the oil is going to look like after being on the dyno, after being driven harder, and after being on ethanol. I think the next oil report we get is gonna be significantly different versus what these ones look like. So I'm excited to see what happens. I'm excited to see the different results from these oils as we continue to do this. And uh, now that the car is back up and running, I am driving it a lot more. I've already put 500 miles on the oil that's on the car now, so only another thousand to go. And then we will pull that oil, send it out to Blackstone and get a sample back for that one. So that way we can, we can also compare gasoline to E85 and see the differences, which actually I'm curious to see. I am, I'm very curious to see the differences between uh, ethanol and gasoline oil, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that's all I got for you guys in this one. I did just want to do a quick overview of the updated oil analysis report from Blackstone Labs. I'll throw a screenshot of this up at the end of the video. So that way, if you guys want to take a peek at it, pause the video, feel free to. The, the most current one does have the values of the castrol and the Motual oil so that way you can compare if you'd like to but like I said if you guys like the video You know what to do hit the thumbs up turn it blue like the Subaru ooh. Ooh. That's a different ooh. ooh. I don't know and if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be you know the spiel One of these corners smash it do it dance on it tap on it throw it I don't care if you want to subscribe. I appreciate it and with that I will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies Woo!